I'm Teresa the Traveler. Today, I'm in Veradero, Cuba, and I'm in one of those old cars, and we're taking a day trip to Havana. I am here with our driver, Jorge, and my friend, <laughs> named Block Bernard. <laughs> Hola. Decide that. Yeah. So as awesome as it is to be driving in fast. an old car, the downside, no, no seatbelts. Yes, yes, <laughs> the bridge, the bridge, the limit. Okay. See that? Not dying. So along the way, we stopped at this little place that apparently has the best pina coladas in Cuba. You order them in a pineapple. <laughs> And they also have a fabulous view. So is it the best pina colada in Cuba? Yes, it is. I love walking through the parking lots in Cuba. There's so many of these old cars. A lot of them are taxis. What's one? Osmobile 58. What is it? Osmobile. Osmobile. Yes. A 58. 58, yes. Okay, so our cab is a 58 Oldsmobile. Well, the original motor was six cylinder gas, but Jorge changed it to diesel. Otherwise, it would be pretty expensive for him to take us on that two hour trip to Havana. This is the Havana Club Rum Factory. They make eight million liters of rum. Is that a year? A year. A year. A year. 80 million liters. A year. A year, yes. This is the big Canadian electricity plant. One of the first things you'll notice when you're in Cuba is that there are a lot of old American cars here. The reason for that is because in 1956, they started to have uh, fighting and revolution because of Fidel Castro coming here from Mexico. And there was an embargo on Cuba, so no more vehicles got sent here after 1956. So a lot of the Cubans couldn't new cars so their only choice was to maintain and restore the cars they had and that's why everywhere you go it's like stepping back in the 50s they have the most amazing American vehicles here all the buses are in Cuba are all government owned this is a cool tunnel so we have to go through this tunnel under the sea in order to get to Havana This is the Sevilla Hotel. It was built in the 1920s and at the time was one of the best hotels. If you decide you don't want to see Cuba in an old car, you can also take a horse-drawn carriage ride through the city. Right here is the Museum of the Cuban Revolution. See, this is some of the equipment that they used back in that time. So the boat inside the museum is the boat that Fidel Castro came to Cuba on from Mexico. So we're loving Jorge as a guy. Because not only is he a cab driver and speaks English, he's, he's also a history teacher. Now I'm in front of the Presidential Palace. This was built in the 1920s. Cuba was a democracy at that time for about 40 years and they had presidents who were elected every four years. But what happened is a general called Bartista decided to overthrow the democratic government and that is what triggered the revolution. Fidel Castro 
then came into power because he was overturning Bartista. This tank here is an auto-propelled cannon from which Commander-in-Chief Fidel Castro shot the U.S. vessel Houston during the mercenary invasion of pigs in April of 1961. So that balcony up there, the Americans had a sniper up there to kill Fidastro, Fidel Castro, who was there, but the Cuban people stopped it. Here is what's left of the wall that once surrounded the city when it was occupied by the Spanish because this is a Spanish colony. Cuba is still a communist country and a lot of the business and everything is owned by the government. Okay. Tell it's a government vehicle because look right here it's got blue on it so anything that has Cuba in blue is a government vehicle. Now this is a private vehicle and you can tell that because it's got a P for private and it's all white, the Cuba is white. So on the license plate, if it's a P, it's private, if it's an E, it's embassy, and if this is a D, it means it's a diplomatic plate. Over here is this amazing pedestrian street along the middle of Havana. So now we're just doing a little tour of the back streets and get a feel for actual Cuban life in Havana. The dogs are very friendly here. We got a couple dogs doing a little sightseeing themselves. <laughs> See the tank up there? They do that for warm water in their house. Very safe, laid back, relaxed vibe around here. We got a nice little fruit stand right here where you can get some fresh bananas. Kind of feels like you're on the set of American Graffiti. Little yellow lemon cabs, I call them, is a popular way to get around Cuba. The lemon cabs are apparently a little more expensive to ride than the normal cabs. This is another nice walking area in Havana. There seem to be a lot of those, a lot of pedestrian streets here. Oh my god, payphones. I have not seen payphones in ages. <laughs> now we're in front of the parliament buildings, our capital building in Cuba. So all the buses in Cuba are owned by the government and they all have the blue plates. Okay, come on. Over here we have the National Theater. This is where the National Ballet would perform. So baseball is the national sport here and apparently the big baseball playoffs are right now and that's what everybody is talking about. But what are the two teams that are playing? Like what who are these guys cheering for? What team? Talking about baseball. But what teams? What's going on with baseball right now? Because now it's a Caribbean series. It's what? The Caribbean series. Oh, it's the Caribbean series. Yes, between Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Mexico. Ah, so is the Cuban team really good? Yes, and we are in the, in the first position now. Cuba's in the first place? Yes, they are, they are talking about that. We will be a champion or we will not be a champion. Ah, so they're determining whether Cuba's going to be a champion or not. He died helping Cuba gain their independence from Spain. Got an interesting Cuban fact for you. So all the food waste from the hotels, they hire these trucks and they go around and collect all the waste and then they use it to feed the pigs. This is the most famous bar in Havana, the Flor Floridita. Floridita. Oh, it looks very popular. Okay. Hemingway. Hemingway. He always was in, in this place. Oh, so Never Hemingway used to drink here. Yes. Uh -huh. He's a here. He drinks a here. Hemingway used to drink daiquiris here. He used to stand right there, and now they have a statue of him. 
This is the most popular bar in Havana because this is where famous author Ernest Hemingway used to come to drink daiquiris. Before the revolution, this building was the head office of Bacardi Rum. Fortunately, after the revolution, they took their rum to Puerto Rico and that's where they make it now. But what a gorgeous building. Today, it's an office building for the government. We have some schoolgirls here in their uniforms. Here's a little chill outdoor cafe with some live entertainment. There are lots of cars here in Revolution Square. Now, we're taking a little tour around Revolution Square. The three main revolutionaries were Fidel Castro and Chilevada and Camilo Sanfuegos. Yeah. He's what? Hungry fire. And you said the guy here, Sanfuegos, died in a plane crash? In a plane crash. The first year of the revolution, in 1959. In October of 1959. was built after the revolution and this is where Fidel Castro would address a crowd of millions. He would stand up there on a podium in front of the statue of national hero Jose Marti. This is United States Embassy. And right up here we have the United States Embassy. The American flag. Currently in New Havana, now we're heading to Old Havana. This is some more remains of the wall that once circled Havana. That is some scary looking wiring. I love you Papa Canada. I love you Papa. Canada no problem, okay? I love you Canada Papa, okay? I love you. Okay, but Donald Trump? Donald Trump? <laughs> Obama good. Obama, Obama good. good. Donald Trump? Trump? <laughs> Oh, Canada good. Canada good. Ken does not like Donald Trump. Trump? <laughs> we are at this really cool cathedral in Old Havana, and it's built from coral. Look at that. And it's located in this really awesome square. And here's the inside of the church. This is the bar where Hemingway would go and drink mojitos. Apparently Hemingway liked the booze. The wall of this bar, it appears as though a lot of people have signed it. Including Carlo. This was once the house of some very wealthy Spanish people, perhaps Spanish royalty. And today, it's a restaurant. I'm just gonna go in and check out the courtyard. Come see here. Yeah, we have a band playing over here. Hemingway, Hemingway lived in this hotel for nine years, the Ambos Mundos. There's some pictures of him up there. So we have like a literal boardwalk here. This is like wood bricks. And then over here, that building's made of coral. This is a statue of Carlos Manuel. He is the founder 
of Cuba. He was the one that started the revolution where they separated from Spain. This is called Fuasa. It's the first castle, Spanish castle, built in Cuba. The moat there used to be filled with crocodiles, so nobody can even swim over to attack. This was built in the 1600s. This is a statue of a crazy guy that lived in Havana for 50 years and just wandered the streets and he died in the 90s and now everyone gets their picture taken with him. So a little cool fact about our tour guide is that he was a guerrilla fighter back in the day and he served with the Cuban army in Angola. He's telling us that it's mandatory for people to serve in the military for three years. There's some school kids wearing their uniforms. A lot of the official women here wear skirts with fishnet stockings. Dog's taking a little nap. <laughs> they have these little Fiat's from Holland. They're just tiny little cars. The entire city feels like an old car show. <laughs> I love this pink cab. Check this out. Got a pink panther. This is the museum for the Cuban Missile Crisis. Are these the missiles that were part of the crisis over there? These are weapons from the Soviet Union from that time. And we're ending our tour with a beautiful view of Havana. We're in a park right here, and there is Havana. Okay. Because the big ship can't come here. It just wouldn't be a Latin country without a big statue of Christ. According to the Cubans, he's got a cigar in one hand and a cup of rum in the other.